Between the desert wastes of the Arabian Peninsula and the eastern shore of the Mediterranean lies a narrow strip of soil known the world over as the Holy Land. Palestine is a place of scorched plateaus and fertile plains, of stony deserts and luxuriant gardens, of desolate war and hopeful peace. Birthplace of a divine idea so powerful that never may the sands of time obliterate it. Nazareth is located in the richly beautiful province of Galilee. The biblical sea of Galilee is here where, according to the Gospels, Jesus called to the simple fishermen, saying, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Through the Galilean Sea flows the ancient river Jordan. In St. Matthew it is written, Then went out to John the Baptist, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. As far as the eye can see, the rich and fertile land spreads itself, sheltered by the hills of lower Galilee while on the horizon beyond bloom the mountains of Upper Galilee, and still the old pastoral life spins on in time, seemingly unchanged since the days when the Good Shepherd was tending his flock. Not mentioned in the Old Testament, Nazareth first became known as the town where Jesus spent his youth. A small town in Lower Galilee, it was the home of Joseph and Mary, and to it they returned after their flight to Egypt. And it was in a synagogue here that Jesus preached the sermon that led to his rejection by his fellow townsmen. Through the ages of massive legends and precarious identifications have grown in connection with Nazareth, an ancient and still colorful town attracting visitors since the century of the great crusaders. In the center of a crossroad on the east side of town, visitors stand in awe at the fountain of the Virgin Mary, the authenticity of which has been verified. Rebuilt in 1862 and still in regular use today, the fountain receives its water from the same mountain sources as it did when Mary and her divine son came by here almost 2,000 years ago. All the precious mementos from the earliest days of Christendom in Nazareth are today guarded and cherished by the brothers of the Franciscan order of Terra Sancta. Right in front of their convent lies the garden of the Church of the Holy Family. Strewn about the garden are relics from the various churches which once stood on this spot. At the northern end of the garden stands the Church of the Holy Family. The main altar of the church in white marble was the present of one Marquis Nicolet. A narrow passage which opens from the lower floor of the church leads to the grotto of the Holy Family. According to ancient tradition, the cave below was once Joseph's home and carpentry shop. 
where the little Lord Jesus dwelt with his earthly parents. In those ancient times, in order to preserve their grain, folks used to dig large compartments under the floors of their homes. Joseph's house was no exception. To extract the grain, a rope was passed through a handle in the wall and pulled from above, an ingenious forerunner of the modern crane. At one end of the grotto, a large opening brings fresh air into the cave. Pilgrims have placed an icon and flowers in the opening. In the center of the crypt, beneath the main floor, are some steps that once led to an old Benedictine monastery. The round opening served as a window and admitted light into a still lower grotto. Part of the original Byzantine mosaic is still discernible. The Church of the Annunciation was erected in 1730, almost modern as time is counted in ancient Nazareth. The present edifice was constructed over the ruins of an old basilica. The western wall of the church borders on a large square which once formed the nave of that basilica, while the statue of Our Lady rests on a granite column dating back to the 4th century. Thousands of devout tourists and pilgrims have come to worship before the church's high altar. Under the high altar lies the Grotto of the Annunciation. Here the chapel has been entirely carved out from rock. The column of the angel, this reddish granite stone, also remains from the fourth century. Above the white marble altar in the main grotto, hangs a memorable painting of the Annunciation, while beneath it is the Latin engraving Verbum Caro Hic Factum Est, which is translated, Here the Word was made flesh. According to tradition, this Franciscan cross marks the blessed spot on which were pronounced the sacred words of the Annunciation. In the vestibule of the grotto, the altar on one side is dedicated to St. Anne and St. Joachim. The other altar is dedicated to the Archangel Gabriel. Tradition has it that behind this iron gate is an area that once comprised the home of the Virgin Mary. The ancient mosaic bears a Greek inscription by Kononos. Another iron door leads into a second compartment of the grotto where an altar dedicated to St. Joseph has been erected. Opposite this altar, a narrow tunnel of stairs leads to a convent built in 1624. This tunnel passes through a cave, which for many years was imaginatively considered to be the kitchen of the Virgin. Some ancient and some very precious are the numerous paintings of the Annunciation which decorate the walls of the famous old church. A ten minute walk from the Church of the Annunciation brings one to the chapel of Mensa Christi, located in the heart of Old Nazareth. A small building crowned by a cupola, it was constructed in 1861 by the Franciscans over the ruins of an ancient oratorio. Visitors to the chapel study a fine painting of Jesus and his disciples taking supper around a large stone table. What is today a Greek Catholic church is believed once to have been that synagogue from which Christ was driven by his townsmen to a precipice after interpreting a certain passage from Isaiah. 
The walls and altar of the former synagogue are crowded with numerous precious icons and paintings. Among these, those depicting Jesus expounding on Isaiah. These youthful sightseers are on their way to the mountain known today as the Precipice. According to local tradition, when the Holy Virgin discovered that the townsfolk were intending to throw Jesus from the precipice, she followed in their footsteps inspired by maternal love to save him. Hardly had she reached this hill when she beheld the Nazarenes returning without their captive. Christ had proven his divine power by vanishing from their midst. Local Christians call the hill Tremori, or Fright, and the Franciscans have erected a white chapel to commemorate the place where the Holy Virgin lived those anxious moments. Because its hills, roads, and byways are hallowed by the footprints of the Galilean, whose name will always be associated with it, Nazareth remains dear in the devout hearts of millions, today, tomorrow, forevermore. <laughs>